Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I'd like to share with you some thoughts I've been having. These have been going around in my mind for quite some time. I'm looking for feedback and I'm looking for um, corrections really. It could be that my thinking is not quite ordered in these matters, but I want to share with you some thoughts with regard to covenant people. It seems to me that there are eight specific types of covenant people I mean we could multiply the types um, um, but let's just let's just keep to the types of people that scripture constantly refers to so we have the innocent now the innocent is children um, up to the age of 12 years of age in Israel in particular it was considered that children were attached to their parents of course up until the age of 12 they were unable to make independent decisions uh, from their parents but after the age of 12 at their bar, bar mitzvah so they became a son of the law at 12 they became morally independent of their parents that's the point so so there is a there is a particular word it's the word innocent and it's used of children the next one is the word righteous now the word righteous in scripture especially in the old testament it is referring to people who um, famously where it speaks of Zechariah and Elizabeth it says that they were righteous before the Lord walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless now we mustn't assume that this means that they were sinless they nobody is sinless but they did um, walk righteously before the Lord and they were blameless before men and um, the reason why they were able to do that is because they constantly availed themselves of those ordinances of the Lord which enabled them to put away sin they en enabled them to cover sin it was they were able to make an atonement a sin offering or an atonement and so in that way they were able to be righteous righteous means to keep the law and famously in chapter 5 of Matthew the Lord Jesus describes eight types of people that are righteous he first of all he talks about those that are poor in spirit he talks about those who mourn he talks about those who are meek he talks about those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. He talks about those that are merciful. He talks about those who are pure in heart, and that means in mind. He talks about those that are peacemakers. And he talks about those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. In other words, they're persecuted because they do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, the thirdly, we have a designation which is used of certain people in Old Testament times. They are called the anointed. They're anointed of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon them to enable them to function in a spiritual capacity. So, for example, the prophets of the Lord were anointed and the priests of the Lord were anointed and the kings of the Lord were were anointed and sometimes of course the prophets servants and the priests servants and the king's servants would be anointed too there was also the case of temple workers who had to be anointed of the holy spirit to enable them to do the construction of the tabernacle or the temple in a way that would beyond that would be beyond ordinary human ability and lastly in this particular um in this particular category I would also put the Apostles the twelve Apostles were anointed of the Holy Spirit to enable them to perform special apostolic uh, we could stroke messianic signs for Israel and then we have the perfect now this expression the perfect is used of disciples of Christ under the old covenant so this is before the cross before they were ever saved uh, do you remember the time when a young man came to the Lord and said what must I do to inherit eternal life he was asking how can I be sure really sure of entering into the messianic kingdom and Christ says well you know the law keep the law and he says well I've kept all the law and yet this and yet I just feel you know there's something missing and Christ says well there is something missing if you would be perfect 
then sell all that you have and give to the poor and come and take up your cross and follow me. So he was inviting this righteous young man to become one of the perfect. So the perfect then is referring to disciples of Christ who've given up all and are following him. It's not referring to Christians. Of course, the disciples at this stage were not Christians. This expression, the perfect, is also used, as we might understand, in the book of Hebrews. It's a key word in the book of Hebrews. And again, it has the similar concept. It's referring not to Christians. It's referring to those who are Jews, who are the Hebrews, who are followers of Christ's teaching. And of course, the phrase, the phrase is also used of Paul when he speaks of the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ in power and great glory. Um, and he talks about the full maturity of their spiritual experience at the coming of Christ. And it probably has reference to them entering into the new covenant because he says, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And we know that in the new covenant there will be a, a full knowledge of the Lord. So the word perfect there is referring to a disciple of Christ. It's referring to somebody who is a learner. And of course, the perfection will give way to the full knowledge of the Lord in the new covenant. So they will have um, a full knowledge of the Lord and the, 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 the office of the rabbi, of the teacher of the law will cease altogether. For every man shall know the Lord perfectly. See the point. Now we have an, the next designation is that of the word sinner. Famously, the Lord Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. So the word sinner then is a word in scripture that is reserved for those that are breakers of the law. They are either careless or they are rebellious, but or maybe they are just unable to keep the law. So they are the unclean or the unfit. And uh, in the lifetime of the Lord Jesus, they are called to repentance. Now, repentance meant that they were to think again about their old life, think again about their waywardness, and they are to return unto the Lord their God, and they are to have a baptism unto repentance. And that baptism was a cleansing um, under the terms of the old covenant, because uh, they were they were unclean, as it were, in God's sight. Now, the sixth one is the word the captivity and the expression the captivity is referring to all those people who are the outcasts they have rejected their covenant god and yet their sin is not so great that the, that it has warranted uh, premature judgment in terms of their mortal lives so they've not died but they have been nevertheless cast out and it refers obviously to those that are taken captive by the Assyrians and those that are taken captive by the Babylonians. Um, and people like this are referred to as um, the unrighteous. OK, um, famously, the Apostle Paul um, in um, Famously, the Apostle Paul, he, he, he refers to them as there is none righteous, no, not one. And what he's saying is that amongst those that are unrighteous, there are none that are righteous. That's the point. There is none that seeketh after God. They have all gone out of the way. And Jeremiah famously says to the Lord, if I can find one righteous man in Jerusalem, will you save the city? And the Lord says, well, if, if there is a righteous man, but he's unable to find one righteous man, no, not one. And so the Lord cast them out of the land. Um, we, we get that expression in, in Revelation where the Lord says, I will spew you out of my mouth. They are the cast offs. They are the outcasts. And in scripture, they're referred to as the captivity. Now, they've not died, but they are not allowed to remain in the holy land because they are unholy. Now, the seventh designation is that of the wicked. And we famously hear how the, the, the wicked are turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So therefore, we have a definition of what wicked is. It's not forgetfulness in the sense of a human um, 
failing. It is a willful forgetfulness. It's a deliberate course of rejection. And uh, people that are wicked come under the premature judgment of God. What I mean by that is they come under the judgment of God before their normal lifespan has come to an end. So they're called the wicked and God moves in extraordinary judgment against them. And then lastly, the eighth designation is that of the blessed. And right through scripture, we have this designation coming up. It's called the blessed. He says, blessed are, blessed are. I mean, Psalm 1 is blessed is the man, you see. So, so the expression, the blessed. And the Lord Jesus famously in chapter 5 again, he refers to the blessed. He says about the blessed that the kingdom of God is theirs. He says that twice. He says that expression for those that um, are poor in spirit. He also says that about those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. So I take it that the expression is used in a different sense, even though it's the same words. The second one is that the blessed will be comforted because they're the ones that previously mourn. So the, the, the blessed inherit the earth. And the reason why they're able to inherit the earth is because all the wicked will be swept away. And so therefore they will actually inherit the earth. They also, the blessed are also filled with the righteousness that they long after. They also obtain mercy. They also see God. We see this in, who is he that shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place, but he that hath a pure heart, and so on and so on. So they see God, the blessed. The blessed are also called the sons of God. So we have these eight designations, as far as I'm able to perceive, of people in the Old Covenant. Let's go through them again. We have the, the innocent, we have the righteous, we have the anointed, we have the perfect, we have the sinners, we have the captivity, we have the wicked, and we have the blessed. Okay. Now you may be saying, well, where does Christians fit into all this? Well, Christians are those that are sinners who stand before God unworthy and unfit and unclean and discover in their unworthy state the grace of God because the grace of God is the special blessing uh, on those who are undeserving of his grace. It is the unmerited favour of God to those whose only requirement is faith in Christ's saving work. So that you could call the ninth designation, but it's not a designation of covenant people. It's the one designation of those that are in Christ. Now it could be that I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing a point here, but this seems to be what scripture is saying. And I appreciate your comments and your feedback on this. And uh, God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you again. Bye for now.